and welcome to Tea and Strumpets, a Regency Romance Review. I'm Zoe. And I'm Kelsey. And we are back for our Bridgerton Happily Ever Afters today. Yay! We always do love a little secondary epilogue from the Bridgertons. Yes, and we've got Hyacinth on the docket for today's discussion. Our, I guess, most... um, What's a good adjective for hyacinth? (laughs) Um, Verbose. Sure. Yeah, that works. She's like the most um, energetic, too, maybe, of the Bridgertons. Uh For sure. (laughs) Um, Well, I've got pregnancy brains, so apparently my internal thesaurus is not working as well as I hoped. That's okay. We all love hyacinth. We discovered her... Briefly in book one, and we learned to love her all through the books, and then we got her book. Yes, which I can't remember what we rated it, either of us, but maybe we'll have to go back, because I don't think that I loved it. It wasn't a favorite, but I think you didn't dislike it as much as you remembered disliking it. That is exactly what I was going to say. (laughs) Yeah, and I am excited to talk about the second epilogue with you today. But before we do that, shall we quickly recap the epilogue from It's In His Kiss? Yes, we shall. So in the epilogue of It's In His Kiss, Hyacinth and Gareth's daughter, Isabella, finds the diamonds that were the major plot point of the entire book. And she doesn't tell anyone. Correct. She just puts them in her drawer. Yep. And so doesn't tell anybody. No. Nope. And so in our second happily ever after, Hyacinth and Gareth have been married for over 20 years, and they're still very much in love. In Hyacinth's case, she has learned to really feel remorse for her mother and her actions towards her mother as a child, because Her mother always told her she could not wait for the day that Hyacinth had a daughter just like her. And Isabella is just as much a minx as Hyacinth was and is suitably driving her crazy. Gareth has managed to get the St. Clair family out of debt and back to a comfortable position since the death of his father. It helped that the man stopped actively hurting the estate, but it did take a lot of hard work to get it back to the position that it is currently in. And this is a task that Gareth has found he has enjoyed. Despite 15 years of living in Clare House, Hyacinth has yet to find the diamonds and is still actively searching whenever she has time. Gareth has stopped looking, but he does like to humor Hyacinth. Mm -hmm. It is during one of these searches that Isabella comes upon her parents and overhears of Hyacinth's fruitless search. She immediately knows what diamonds Hyacinth is referring to, since they are currently in a secret compartment in one of her desk drawers. And Isabella knows what she must do. A year later, Hyacinth is again searching for the jewels, as she does from time to time. During this search, she chooses the nursery washroom, because she has once again systematically searched all the other washrooms in the house, except for the nursery and her own. As she is scouring the floor, Hyacinth spies a small crack. As she picks at it, the plaster gives way, and with the small chisel Hyacinth always carries, she is able to pop one of the tiles off, revealing its bounty. Hyacinth immediately hollers for Gareth, who finds his wife with her prize. A floor below, Isabella hears her mother shouting, I did it, and smiles to herself. Oh my gosh, I'm so ready to discuss this. I know. (laughs) I was so frustrated. (laughs) Because, okay, so you and I always talk about an honest conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, you feel kind of, like, I felt kind of gypped at the end of Hyacinth's book. Like, I get it. There's, like, this... this, um, kind of symbolic irony of like Hyacinth and her inquisitiveness and then her daughter finds it and just puts it away Mm -hmm. like and and and, but I I get like that she's kind of not reaping the reward that she thinks she's due but actually like is reaping all this wonderful life instead um but 
as a reader, like you want that reveal. Like I would have loved the scene of Hyacinth's daughter saying, hey, mom, look what I found. Like, yeah. And we still don't get it in this one. No. <laughs> Although I will say like – I just love it because Hyacinth's daughter, like, I see it as, like, because it starts with Hyacinth in the dress shop with Isabella. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, my God, my poor mother. What I must have put her through. Oh, yes. my God, this child is driving me crazy. And mm-hmm. I just love it because, you know, it's almost like a little gift Isabella gives her mother, the reward of finding the diamonds. And I love that it takes – a year later for Hyacinth yes. to find them. <laughs> okay. Like, I I liked that, but I still wanted the reveal. Like, I still wanted the reveal of Hyacinth knowing that her daughter found them um, and being proud of her in some way. Like, I liked that idea more. So, like, I don't know. It just kind of, like, I felt frustrated. I was rolling my eyes like, of course, we still don't get what I want. (laughs) Yeah. But we do get – in other cases, we do get a fulfillment of Hyacinth and Gareth's romance. This one, this Happily Ever does have a very explicit encounter. Yes. I was surprised. But we (laughs) – you know, but – was it we were wondering – what was that one of our qualms with the book was that it wasn't as steamy as we thought it should be based off, like, ha- Gareth's roguish reputation? Perhaps, but I don't know. I think, like, if we think about how we felt with Francesca and how she had this encounter that was really quite pivotal mm-hmm. to her second happily ever after and we yeah. both felt like it wasn't superfluous – I felt like this one kind of was superfluous. I think. I mean, I think it was too. I think that it could have done because even it was superfluous, and especially since Isabella even says she's no, she's used to finding her parents in weird locations together. They're often ones to like pull each other into a room. You know, she Mm -hmm. does acknowledge the affection between her parents and how it is not a conventional marriage of the ton. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that would have done enough for me. Like I didn't, I didn't need an encounter between them, but it was perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, I think for me overall, I was like, I kind of was rolling my eyes a little bit at this one Mm -hmm. just because I was like, it's not how I want it. (laughs) I still don't get what I want after all this time, Uh, even though Hyacinth does finally find the jewels, which is exciting. And it does feel final, you know, like it it does give you that finality that you're like looking for and that resolution. It does. And I do like, you know, how it ends with Isabella, like smiling to herself, like, you know, and I also just love Hyacinth's joy in finding them, I will say. (laughs) That was very cute. And the fact that, you know, she's calling her husband like, look what I did. I did it. I finally accomplished this task. Like, I know I – and that I think is very sweet and very, very nice. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I was left still a little, like, wanting. (laughs) (laughs) Did you have any quotes in this short little snippet? I did have a quote. It's just this moment. It's kind of long, but – I'm going to share it anyway. It's this moment between Gareth and Hyacinth that I really liked. Mm -hmm. You could have bought me a necklace, she said, and you could have hidden it. She turned her head so that she could kiss the curve of his neck. Just so that I could have found it, you could have hidden it. But you didn't. I, and don't say you never thought of it, she said, turning back so that she was once again facing the wall just a few inches away. But her head was on his shoulder and he was facing the same wall. And even though they weren't looking at each other, their hands were still entwined and somehow the position was everything a marriage should be. Because I know you, she said, feeling a smile growing inside. I know you and you know me and it's just the loveliest thing. I had that highlighted too. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it just was a really like, it was a very sweet moment Mm -hmm. because yeah, Gareth could have bought her a necklace and hidden it and let her have the joy. But he knew that that wasn't right for her Mm -hmm. because he knows her. Yeah. You know, it's just part of, part of the fun of that necklace was the finding of it. (laughs) Yes. Or when I think part of the fun of the necklace also was the, the, the lore, the mm-hmm. mystery, the and the looking for it. Yeah, so, exactly. So for sure. 
Do you have anything else you wanted to share? Or was that what you were going to share? That was too? one of them. And then <laughs> another was along the same lines. But this one is just perfect because it's with Hyacinth and Isabella. Mm. All those times Hyacinth said, hating how tired her voice sounded. All those times she said to me, I hope you have a child just like you. And you do, Isabella said, surprising her with a light kiss to the cheek. Isn't it just delightful? <laughs> <laughs> it's so wonderful. I mean... I I think we all knew she was going to. Yeah. And that is quite uh, satisfying. <laughs> mm -hmm. It really is. And I think that Isabella, there's also a beautiful moment where Isabella like says something in Italian. Hyacinth's like, I heard that. She's like, but did you understand it? <laughs> <laughs> Such a Hyacinth thing to say. I mean, there is something wonderful, though, about your kids being like you, even even the the things that you don't like about yourself. Like, there's mm -hmm. still something just wonderful where you're like, oh, OK, you get that from me. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it really is. And I think, you know, I had a moment of, you know, she even says looking at her daughter and yet feeling pride at like having her daughter who's grown even though she's so much like her, you know, she just gets like a moment in her chest of like, and I, you know, talking to my mom, I think my mom gets that too, where she's just like, I'm just so proud of you. Like you're an adult doing adult things. And I'm just so proud of you. It's, it's pretty incredible. I've only been a mom for a year and a half now. And uh, today my daughter went to a dance class and didn't cry <laughs> <laughs> and ran around the room. And, you know, she wasn't necessarily following the instructions, but you know what? She was exploring the space, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just, I had that moment. I was just like, I'm just so proud of her. Like she's coming into her own and she's got confidence and whatever it is. And it is, it is just this like this very warm thing. And I'm sure I'm going to feel it, you know, mm -hmm. many more times. And I'm sure I'm also going to have the, uh, <laughs> she's just like me moments yeah. too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, before we go, we do want to remind you that we have a Patreon that we started fairly recently. So we are still, you know, pushing that and grateful and looking for your support. Mm -hmm. Our Patreon tiers begin at $3 a month and you get some fun goodies and extras and our undying love and affection, of course. And you can find out more and support us at patreon.com slash TN Strumpets. T is in Tom, N is in Nancy, Strumpets. And if you aren't in the position to support us monetarily, then there are lots of other ways to show your support. You can subscribe to us on YouTube and leave comments there, leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Facebook, or anywhere else you can review us. Or follow us on social media at T's and Tom as in and <clears throat> at T's and Tom and as in Nancy Strumpets. <laughs> And if you'd like to know ahead of time what we're reading each month, subscribe to our email notifications via our website. If you subscribe, you're the first to know what we're reading. Plus, you'll get all sorts of other extras, including exclusive content from each of the authors who join us on the podcast. Our website is romancepod.com, and there you can find episodes, more information about us, and other resources. So take a look. All right, Kelsey, what are we reading next time? We are reading... A book by Kerrigan Byrne, a big Ooh. fan favorite of ours. And this is the fifth, fifth book. Fifth, yeah. In her Good Girls series, which Zoe and I have been loving. So we are starting out with book number five. It is a recent release and it is Crying Wolf. Yes. And this is a little bit, it's definitely like part of the series. I haven't read it yet, but I feel like this could be. And and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like this could be a standalone because it's kind of like a secondary part of the series. It is. The last book ended with some revelations, and this is kind of taking off part of those revelations, although we do get some loving sister moments from the good girls we already know and love. Very exciting because, man, some of those, some of those sisters are like really – in my memory and heart already. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to talk about a Kerrigan burn. We haven't ever done a Kerrigan burn, I think, on the podcast. I think we've only had her as an uh, as an author to interview. I don't think we actually have read one of her books. You're right. I don't think we have, which is a shame because I've read a lot of them. And they're so good. I even recently read her non-romance series that oh, did you? I read the, the first two books of that. The Ooh. And it was... 
It's uh, really good, and I am waiting for number three now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's kind of an addictive author once you get going with her, which is my favorite kind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm excited for that. So join us next time as we read Crying Wolf by Kerrigan Byrne. And may all your ever afters end happily. 